In this video, independent property adjuster Laura Samford reports from her current daily claims deployment in Australia. Because of a connection she made at the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters Conference in 2020, she's been working almost nonstop for two years, including the last six months in another country. Learn how handling claims is different down and down. I'm Matt, and this is Adjuster TV. <laughs> You're watching Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, Matt here, and welcome to Adjuster TV, where I share my more than 20 years of experience as a cat property IA to help you build a rewarding career as an independent adjuster so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. I caught up with property adjuster Laura Samford as she approaches the end of her first six month stint overseas handling claims. She was originally called to run flood claims, but because Australia is also shorthanded when it comes to adjusters, she has stuck around and handled all kinds of claims from fires to earthquake claims. Learn more about what it's like to run claims overseas and how you can set yourself up to get a gig like this. But first, as you know, we're entering the peak of hurricane season and you need to be ready to hit the ground running if and when we get a major landfalling hurricane this year. Do you wanna know how you can jump to the front of the line for deployments at major IA firms? Then you gotta check out the 2022 Adjuster TV Hurricane Orientation. In this totally free, totally live training, you'll learn what the full deployment process actually looks like from somebody who's worked several hurricanes, including 2005's Katrina, yours truly, how standby works, what to expect at orientation, how claims are assigned, and so on. You'll also learn how to build a total loss estimate in minutes instead of hours or days, even if you've never handled a claim before. And as a special bonus, if you attend live, you'll get first crack at early bird pricing for my fast track to deployment property adjuster certification program, which by the way, enrollment officially reopens with the first webinar, so you do not wanna miss it. Register for the next 2022 Adjuster TV Hurricane Orientation at adjustertv.com slash thrive. Okay, here's my chat with Laura. That looks pretty good for being all the way on the other side of the planet. <laughs> it's been a crazy ride. I bet. I bet. So tell me what's going on over there. So you, you got sent to Australia for, is, was it flood? Right. It flooded back in March, February, March. Okay. Uh, they had the, the storms. The last I heard, it was over 206,000 claims all down wow. the east. Yeah, a huge event. Um, Lismore got hit really bad. That's south of Brisbane, um, east coast. Uh, but yeah, it was just tremendous. A lot of the folks that were brought over, there were 35, 40 of us brought over and a lot of them came up north. I ended out in Sydney. Um, they put me at Bondi beach and I was running a lot of just regular everyday storm claims. Um, but just how it worked out. Hey, I had a few flames thrown in there and, and all, but um, yeah, the, that was, I enjoyed Sydney. It was a lot of fun down there and they, Very they cool. a little differently here. It's not 12 hours a day, seven days a week. You have to have Sunday off. Okay. So, you know, being in Sydney one day off. <laughs> yeah. Sunday. Right. <laughs> what you gonna do? So what's t so the question? The, 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 what I'm dying to know is is like what's the weather like right now? What's winter? It's winter down there, right? It is. It's winter. So um, what's winter our, in Australia like? Seventy degrees in Brisbane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Southern California, kind of. 65. Um, that's Brisbane. If you go down to Melbourne and they put me down there for a while too. It was, it was cold, but it still wasn't bad. You're talking snowy and icy. 
Um, I think they had a couple of days where they had some flurries, but nothing really sticks. I don't know if it even really got white, but yeah, it just, yeah, no, winter's not, not too bad. They do have areas where it snows and people just flock to it. And they think that's just the most amazing thing. They do have skiing here, uh, yeah. but I'm going to have to go go to a special place to get that. Right, right. Very cool. So now you and I met at NACA, was it this year or last year? Last year. And last I'm the girl that just, just wants to work. Yep, <laughs> yep. Totally remember. Um, so now after, so between like right now and was 2021 NACA, uh, like what have you been doing claims wise besides leaving the country? Oh, goodness. Um, well, I started with pilot and went out and had what one month with them during Delta and Laura. And then I think maybe that's when um, after that, I went back home, did some study and got New York license, FAA drone licensed, all, all kinds of training and then met you at NACA and then went from NACA over to another conference. And then um, I was home for, let's see, what happened? Um, I went to some training in Mobile. And then from there, I went to the, well, I was supposed to continue training. I was actually supposed to be taking additional courses while in Mobile. And then the freeze happened in Texas. So I went straight from Mobile because I, I had a job, went straight over and started work in Houston. Then I worked Dallas. Then I went home for three days, went to Georgia, worked out there. And then I went to Allen, Texas and was in um, paid training there uh after that they before the training was over the floods happened in lake charles may 17th and so i just stayed on ended out with 11 months working there i was out yeah. in the field i was at the desk um then that just was coming to an end i got my fcn card um so i'm full board with that um then I went, what? Well, that was shutting down. You know how it is. We work ourselves out of a job. There just wasn't anything left to do and um, ended up being home for two weeks and then came over here. That's crazy. So, so I'm, I'm yeah, so I'm, oh yeah, well, that's, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. And I think, you know, if you, you could probably speak a little bit to the kind of attitude you got to have and sort of, you know, I would say work ethic, they want to keep people busy who are like this clicks with, right? So clearly it's, it hasn't, I mean, right now in the States, it's been a little bit slow. Um, obviously you're not in the States right now, but um, so I'm curious. So with your, with your claims experience already in the States, how, how is it different or is it different in Australia? Cause I, it's it's intriguing to me, first of all, like what the difference is in the policies and like how you're running claims, but also why they needed to send Americans or people from out of the country to Australia to handle claims. Um, the the difference in policy, there really are a lot of similarities. The policies are going to do the same things, but um, as far as the way that we run it. We came over here wondering or thinking we're going to climb on roofs. We're going to be in crawl spaces. They don't want any of us on roofs or in crawl spaces doing any of that. Um, I think they could even get fined or something if we did. They're all tile roofs and metal roofs anyway. Don't really want to be climbing those any more than you have to. So um, here we go out, we do our assessment, our inspection. And we're really just the eyes and ears for the insurance company. We write a very basic scope. I mean, we're talking ceiling, cornice, wall. And that's what we put in our report as far as what's damaged. We don't get into the nitty gritty of how much or any of that. We put a few line items into our report. Um, but then we send a builder out to give a detailed quote. 
and we send a roofer out for causation. Um, if it's a flood and they don't have flood coverage on their policy, we send a hydrologist to make sure it was flood. Their uh, definition of flood is different than ours. So uh, we have to find out where the water actually came from. It's not two or more acres or two more properties. It's uh, did it breach the banks of a river? And so we have to know if it's uh, runoff or if it's really flood based on their definition. So hydrologists come into play. We spend a lot of money just on the experts, engineers and hydrologists. Very it, interesting. It's all different. And we're so, using ability a lot over here. We, we don't use Xactimate, we use Symbility. Okay, okay, interesting. So you're so there's nobody in Australia who's able to, or there aren't enough people in Australia who are want to be claims adjusters who can do this? They, they're really needing people over here. And yeah. I've actually been out in the field training some people. They've got people that have been sitting behind the desk and they know some of the systems. Well, one gal has never sat behind the desk with our company. So she doesn't know the system. She knows insurance, but she's got all the systems to learn, but never been in the field, never measured out a room, never scoped it, any of that. So I've had a few people that I've had to take out and train. It's been fun. Interesting. Interesting. So you you went over there in March and it's the end of August right now. So that's uh, quite a few months. Are you have you been able to go home for like a vacation or are you just six days a week nonstop? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I brought my husband over and he was here for a couple of weeks and that was nice. <clears throat> kind of yeah. a funny story. I thought I was going to be in the Sydney area a little longer and um, they call me like Wednesday and say, you're leaving Friday. And I'm like, well, can I stop and pick my husband up at the airport Friday morning before? <laughs> so we, we were able to drive down to Melbourne and that was a nice trip. It's amazing the, the things that you see on the way. There's a lot of forest and they've had brush fires. So the entire way from Sydney down to Melbourne, which is about a two day trip you'd see burned trees. They've had so much damage from that. Yeah. So you get yeah, floods of brush fires. It's crazy. Yeah. So I noticed also that you don't seem to have a Australian accent yet. Have no. you picked up any lingo? <laughs> any day, sayings mate. or any besides <laughs> good day, mate? Which, you know, everybody, anybody who's seen Crocodile Dundee knows that one. Fucking wobbly. That one I love. Wobbly? Chucking a wobbly. So somebody throwing a fit. They're chucking a wobbly. Chucking a wobbly. That you know, it it's funny. It's sometimes sometimes the expressions make sense and sometimes they don't. I think that one makes sense. Um, yeah. So any idea how much longer you probably gonna end up staying there? Um, right now I think my flight's scheduled to leave the 24th of September. So that's probably my six month mark. And that might be it unless something else happens. So. I gotcha. Well, that might actually be right in time. If something happens with hurricane season, which currently it's absolutely crickets here right now, um, yeah. you might come back to more excitement. Who knows? Or nothing. That's nothing might happen at all. Well, there's um, some stuff brewing out there, but you just never know what it's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. My video, one of my most recent videos from well, basically from last week, um, I was looking back at the last year and Hurricane Ida blew up in on the 26th. And by the 29th, it was making landfall in New Orleans with... 150 mile an hour winds. It was yeah. just like, I mean, it's a very strong storm. So it can happen just like that. Yeah. So, well, last year we were busy. Again, what Lake Charles got hit May 17th, and they'd already been hit with Ida and then Laura, or no, not Ida, but Laura and then Delta. And then, yeah. 
I felt so bad for Lake Charles, but Lismore over here is kind of like Lake Charles. They just keep getting hit. Yeah. Um, one thing that I heard about the flood insurance, the cost of it over here, Lismore is not a wealthy town. It's just, you know, the average working Joes out there. Flood insurance costs roughly $25,000 a year. And of course, it depends <laughs> on where you're at. Well, with all those experts that you got to bring on to the claims, I, I can see why. Yeah, well, it gets really expensive, but I'm not sure how people live over here. It's a great country and I've loved it, but housing prices are through the roof. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, what was I just going to ask you? Um, so being like, so when you got called and you, and you're, you went there with Crawford, right? Uh -huh. I was on board um, with Crawford and Sedgwick, but Crawford just had the visa processed quicker. Okay. So you had two different companies that were like saying, hey, you want to go? So how did that call? I mean, I can kind of imagine how it went, but for people who are watching this and who there maybe if they've never been deployed and or never been deployed overseas, like your phone rings, hey, it's Laura, what's going on? And what do they say? Oh, um, I think it was more of an email and you know, <laughs> we're getting your visa ready to go. And then it's that, oh, heck moment. And <laughs> this yeah. is real. You got to commit. Yeah, it's it's real. So, oh, I, I committed. I was ready to go. It wasn't that. It was just, when's it ever going to happen? I'm not a patient person. So sitting there waiting <laughs> was killer. That, that was yeah. one of the worst parts about it. And then I had some friends that were trying to get on to. And so we were back and forth about, have you heard anything? Have you, you know, so. Right, right. Yeah. So what's the, so what's the volume T talk a little bit about the kind of the volume of work that you've had to do every day, maybe like the, with, along with the drive time, are you spending a lot of time in the car? How long does it take you to do one of your estimates or your inspections or whatever? Honestly, it just depends. I've had some that are really close to me. So one of them I'm running dailies now. So I've had earthquake, I've had all kinds of unusual claims, but the closest one was about six blocks away from me. Um, another one would be an hour and 15 minutes away from me. And so it just depends on what's going on that day as to how much I can get done and windshield time. And of course you try and plot your claims where they're all in the same general area. Right. Um, but when we got here, we were told five claims a day. And, um, which is doable, but it also helps if you know what you're doing to begin with. <laughs> sure. It's a learning curve. For sure. Well, so, and so when you call people, so are you setting your own schedule? Like, are you, are you making your contact calls or oh, yeah. so when you call, when you, when you call people and you identify yourself and you're clearly not Australian, like do people like comment <laughs> no. about it? They do. They pick up on that. Yeah. They ask, uh, well, will it be you this coming? And because they're thinking I'm from a call center and right. setting a schedule for somebody else. And so, yeah, I've, I've had a few that, but everybody has been so incredibly friendly over here. They ask you, do you want tea? Do you want coffee? And they want to make you feel right at home as you're doing your inspection. Sure. And so I get a lot of um, good day, love, you know, at the end of <laughs> inspection. And it, it, it's been a good experience, but it is a lot of work. There's a lot to be done. And the learning curve, there's always that yeah. in every cat. Yeah. Um, do you, do people, or do you ask or do people offer up like, you know, hey, you got to go check out this restaurant or go, have you seen this place yet? Or because oh, yeah. I know a lot of people. So like, tell me what's because you're, nice. you're getting a lot of insider information. You're not getting like the the tourist book or the, the Google or whatever you're getting like from the locals. 
Um, anything that's really been like that you that you that you could write home about that's that was interesting. It's, did you like food or like experiences or places? Okay, I am really craving Mexican food. When I get home, I don't know <laughs> out of a Mexican restaurant. Um, <laughs> kangaroo. They have kangaroo steak here. Okay, is it good? That was good. Um, oh, there's. Let's see. Pebbly Beach was a really neat place that somebody told us about, and that we found on the drive from Sydney down to Melbourne. Um, it's a beach out in the middle of nowhere and nobody is around. It's just so tranquil and the kangaroos are there. And so you just go to the beach and the kangaroos and you're it. That's you're all alone. That's pretty cool. Oh, it, it was an amazing drive through rainforest. I've been able to do so many incredible things. I've been in rainforest. I've seen kangaroos. I've held a koala bear. Um, I've, oh gosh, Melbourne was like the place for all the arts. So I saw uh, Harry Potter and I saw Hamilton and nice. they have a ton going on in Melbourne. Um, I, I've taken so many tours that I was starting to give tours <laughs> for some. <of> them. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So any so if if somebody gets a call or email saying, "Hey, you want to go to Spain or Australia or the Philippines or wherever to to go work," what would you say to them? Do it. Do it. It's a once in a lifetime chance. Um, I know a lot of people were nervous about coming to Australia because they've heard of the snakes and the spiders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, truly, that was that was one of the big conversations, and ha I haven't seen any. And I know they're deadly. I'm not looking for them, but right. You know, there's a lot of people over here, and they're all doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that would have been my main concern. Would have been like the the big spiders that you know you wake exactly. up but it's it's lowering down from the ceiling onto your face kind of thing but uh, it's the little ones that you got to worry about though oh really mm -hmm. i see um I see any of them so yeah um so do they have like i want to keep asking you like totally random like tourist questions but like <laughs> Do they have McDonald's there or like yeah. fried chicken or and like, so how, how is like a McDonald's double cheeseburger or whatever? Is it different than it is in the States? I hear it's really pretty good. Um, I yeah. try not to go to McDonald's, but they have bathrooms. Okay. So a touristy thing that I'm, I'm I always want to know where the next bathroom is. Sure. Just, you know, so they don't typically have them at the gas station. You have to put okay. public toilet in your GPS to go find something, and it might be in a school. <laughs> oh, really? It's pretty interesting. Schools, parks, whatever. But, you know, I, I would like a Casey's or a Raceway or a, you know, a Bucky's would be great. Mm, right. Oh, boy. Yeah. Bucky's. I mean, they got the space for it down there, I imagine. Uh, yeah, so I, I've had McDonald's in Mexico and Paris, and yeah. it's oh, it's different. And a lot, and in both those cases, they had like beer. I had like alcohol on the menu, yeah. but I was just curious what Australia was like. At the office. They what? They have that at the office. Beer. <laughs> hey, well, you know, it's just like the 60s and the, you know, the, the work ethic is <laughs> a, a little different here. Their time um, and it's it's legislated. So they work 830 to sure. five minute after five o'clock. Hey, dude, I'm out of here. Um, and they do. They've got beer and wine in the refrigerator and 430 on Fridays. They might hang out a while and enjoy the evening. Interesting. That's that's pretty cool. So 
but you being an independent adjuster who is a business person and a, basically a business owner, are you like, all right, well, it looks like it's 459 and I'm done. Do no. you do that or do you like it's nine o'clock and you're still? No, you, you keep working until you get it done. There's, yeah. there's a lot to do. There's going to be for a while. So, yeah. Well, that's very cool, Laura. I'm so glad we we got a chance to kind of catch up on this because I was I've never I've never worked overseas like that. I've never been called to go overseas. I know a bunch of people have gone to Puerto Rico and Canada, um, but I it's just kind of blows my mind that they would send Americans to Australia. Um, I mean, my questions again, I, you answered them, but it's like, well, what kind of insurance is it the same kind of insurance? Like, where are the Australians who want to be adjusters? Or, so, thank you so much for jumping on here. Are you going to be at NACA in January? I don't know if you're I'm not there. I'm hoping to be working, but yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed NACA. NACA is well worth the the trip. Um, that, yeah. That's how I, that's how I'm here actually. I met somebody at NACA and just kind of was able to get involved with the company and they've kept me busy. So, you know, yeah. just work. <laughs> you could probably use a break, Laura. It's, it's okay to take a little short break. <laughs> yeah, but I, get, I get home and I just, I start wondering where's that next paycheck coming from? And I get kind of nervous. Right. I don't want, I could use a little downtime. Absolutely. Yeah. But no, it's, it's, okay, it's okay to decompress. You have a little yeah. bit of a brain break. Get away, step away from it for a couple of weeks and then jump back in. Yeah. Well, oh, and I think if you're, if you're going to travel overseas, something else to think of is here in Australia, we pretty much speak the same language. There are some differences. Yeah. So if you go to a country where you don't speak the language, it could be really hard. I don't sure. know how well that would work out but they do have translators and people to help with things like that too. So oh. it's not like you're all on your own. I remember talking to a guy some years ago who was an adjuster and he had gone to Quebec where mm -hmm. everybody speaks French. And of course, right. everybody also speaks English, but they only spoke French to him. Mm -hmm. But so he was doing his claims. He had to take a, a translator with him everywhere he went. To translate for them um but yeah very interesting um very cool and uh what time is it there right now 8 35 in the morning okay all right so you're you're behind yeah it's it's well uh, no i'm i'm ahead i'm like what oh you're the next day so you're like okay it's 4 35 in the afternoon over here in montana so uh, also okay. very hot yeah, I hear you guys are having record heat. A little bit of a yeah. heat wave, so. But hey, yeah. you know, it's summertime. Well, they flew me cool. up here to uh, Brisbane. I was down in Melbourne running the desk, and then they flew me up here to Brisbane to work, start working some more daily claims. And um, as I'm flying up, it's flooding again in Sydney. And nice. Yeah. And the next day after I got here, it was the coldest day they'd had in 35 years in Brisbane. And I'm like, you guys promised me sunshine. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? Yeah. Then the other guys that were down in Melbourne still work. And there was just a few of us left. They're now working in Sydney because of that next round of flooding that happened. Wow. So we still have, I think, five of us over here and one Canadian. Yeah, and it's uh, everybody's been great though. My first Very boss, cool. she was from Scotland, and mix a Scottish accent with an Australian accent. I couldn't understand a word she said. <laughs> I bet <laughs> we did a lot of texting and emails, <laughs> right? Why you like face to face? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I'm so sorry. Right. That's funny. Oh. Well, very cool, Laura. I appreciate uh, you jumping on and uh, I'll let you get back to it. But um, definitely um, stay in touch. And if you 
if you stay there or if you they send you someplace else you know let's keep us posted for sure and hopefully we can see you at uh NACA this year or this coming in 2023 back in Vegas right yep yep I think it starts the 15th I think it's the 15th to the 19th right now and this is August they still got early bird pricing so okay I'll have to check that out I just never know where I'm gonna be I was working. right so that's kind of one of the points of NAC is to help you get a job so I'm out working yep uh, yeah so there you go and thank you Very cool. I just you you've got some great programming and I appreciate what you do because man <laughs> I've learned I've learned a lot just go back and watch the videos anytime so all right Laura well thanks so much again and we'll uh catch up with you later all right take care you bet we'll see it bye don't forget to register for the 2022 Adjuster TV Hurricane Orientation and be sure to show up live so that you can get special early bird pricing on our flagship Adjuster Training Program and Certification, aka the Fast Track to Deployment Certification. This certification is currently honored by the following firms, Pilot, Alacrity, Sedgwick, Paysetter, CCMS, and Crawford. All of these firms had a hand in the development of our new certification, so you know this is the real deal. Register for the free hurricane orientation at adjustertv.com slash thrive, and I'll see you there live. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great storm. Adjuster TV. We have it all together. We just forgot where we put it. You're still here? As a gift for being here after everyone else is gone, here's a coupon for a free month of AdjusterTVPlus.com. Just use code FERRIS at checkout. That's F-E-R-R-I-S. You're welcome.